Okay, so here we are at the Perma University Biochar Live Fire 2 with lecture on, you know, what biochar is. And uh, biochar is charcoal that is created with the intent to be used for food or medicine, whether it's internally or you're going to put it in the ground as a soil a me, a soil mediation for food production. Biochar is easily created. Uh, it's so easily created that industry has regulations on manufacturing biochar to the point of where you at home cannot produce biochar legally. Um, but you can have a backyard camp out and social gathering while burning a fire pit. So what I'm about to do is illegal because we're not having a backyard barbecue camp out social gathering and I'm about to make biochar. Now the biochar that I'm making is using a micropyre method that we created at our design firm for people who live in dense urban populated areas, they don't have a lot of biochar resources available to them, they don't need to make a whole lot of it for whatever reason. So we came up with a method that we call micropyre. And the micropyre is no larger than six inches at the base and no taller than four inches in height, hence the name micropyre. Now, biochar, once it's created, has a lot of really, really great properties. Not only can you use it to filter your water and filter your air, you add it to your soil and it increases your crop yield by 30%. Upon creation, it starts immediately sucking nitrous oxide out of the atmosphere in large quantities. The volume of nitrous oxide absorbed is only dependent upon the quality of the biochar, but sufficient to say the next eight to 10,000 years, it will suck the nitrous oxide out of the air. Uh, as a soil amendment, it increases microbiological growth by providing safe habitat and food for them. Uh, beneficial bacteria beneficial mycorrhizal um, inhabit the biochar the plants themselves their the root fibers and filaments you know adhere to the biochar and and take it up it's been shown to increase uh, crop yield and growth by 30 percent um, when used as a soil amendment it can take uh, alkaline, heavy metal, non-productive soil and within one year remediate it to having all sorts of biodiversity um, within the area that it's applied. So here I just picked up a piece of wood off the ground. Now the reason for a top lighting your micropyre is this is how you get this is how you get your uh, your biochar. If you light from the bottom up, the combustion processes create nothing but uh, but ash. If you light from the top down, the gases, the constituent gases that create combustion, are forced out from the bottom, out the side, and they come up and they ride the thermal plume and are sucked into the flames. And at this point they combust and the heat plume goes up and it causes this, this air channel that comes up like this. And as the gases are drawn out of the wood, they create a, a vacuum or pull of the flame down into the air that's coming up. I've sort of successfully top lit the fire. And 
this is why I have a protected barrier, because it makes it so much easier. do a micropire. As soon as you expose it to a crosswind, it changes the dynamic of the flame. A real easy way to make a, a micropire fire ring is using a piece of aluminum foil and folding it like I folded this piece of paper, making a ring around it. Now if you notice, I'm not producing any smoke. And if you see this vapor that looks like smoke coming in from down here, and it comes up into the flame, this is actually the volatile gases that get combusted. And you can actually see right here where my finger is, that's the interface point of combustion. The gases come up and then they're combusted into the flame. These are the volatile gases right here coming out of the micropyre. This is the um, and here you can see very clearly the gases coming up and being consumed by the flame as the fire is moving down through the pyre. That's really pretty. And if you notice, I, when I take the, the paper away, that the, can, the airflow wants to flow this way and up. And so I put the paper there as a barrier, there's no smoke. I take the barrier bigger. away, and within a little bit, there should be smoke being produced. As you're combusting your biochar, you want to pay attention to the color of the coals. Because the color of the coals is what determines basically the temperature, and the quality of the biochar as you're creating it. Now if you notice right here, right here you see a lot of ash and that <clears throat> that ash that's produced there that is actually from the bark of the of the tree. Now inside is the biochar and here we see the the micropyre is cooking down really good on this side there's still some stuff here on the back side that it's you know finishing doing its cooking I'm gonna get the water ready now there's no sparking there's no popping there's no cracking there's no sticks or cinders being blown out. If, uh, if I was to do this with the cone kiln, I wouldn't be able to put my hand this close to the flame. I wouldn't be able to pass my hand through the flame. It would just be too hot. I wouldn't be able to be this close to the fire if this was a cone kiln. One of the things that combustion creates in the process of combustion is infrared radiation. Hey, come on over. Yeah, you come on over. It creates infrared radiation, in the and that's what we feel is heat. And something this small, the infrared wavelengths, you can get really, really close, and your body absorbs them because it's kind of like sunlight. Now, if I was to have a foot diameter cone kiln that was eight inches deep, the infrared radiation being thrown off of that would be enough to, if I was this close, it would melt my skin, set my clothes on fire. So, micropires are a very wonderful way of safely creating biochar. It's so safe that kids could do it. Um, on really, really, really hot days, when there's a burn ban in effect, you could still make biochar using this method. And those, uh, those volatile gases, that's methane, ethane, uh, uh, your various uh, volatile oils. Um, if you were to squeeze this, 
and get all the oil out of it, you'd be able to put it in a diesel engine and run a diesel engine on it. It's known as bunker fuel. And so the key to this is you want to light it at the top and that's how you get the volatile gases to come back into the flame. Okay. Well, Native Americans and indigenous people, they light the fire at the top and it goes down. Okay. Number one reason, you don't give yourself away with a big plume of smoke burning through the sky. Number two reason, if somebody comes along and you need to douse the fire real quick, you just take your clump of dirt and you put it right over the top of it. So, down to the point of where it looks like I'm gonna, I'm gonna douse it, I'm, I'm ready to make some biochar. Uh, looks like it's getting all smoky. All the way out, but there's a lot of ash. Wow, look at all that biochar I just created. Here we go. Now like with all micropires, you're going to get stuff that doesn't burn. And off the stuff that doesn't burn, you pick the stuff off that does burn. Now this biochar, once it dries out, can be used for air filters. It can be used for water filters. You can grind it up into a really fine powder and use it internally for medical stuff. Uh, you can use it topically medically to draw toxins and poisons out of the skin, um, fight an infection. Know? How do you know it's the stuff you want? Well, I'm going to do this. Smear test first. Well, it's not streaking or staying, making an oil streak on my skin. But I want to make sure, so. This is test number one for testing your biochar. The streak test. Because really you want just pure car a pure carbon structure with no oils left over. And if you have no oils left over when you do this, there won't be any streaking on my hand. Hey, that looks pretty good. There's no streaking. Okay. It's washed off really easy. Okay, super scientific test number two. Y'all ready? There should be no smoky odor at all. Are you smelling smoky odor? No. Okay. That's cool. Now if I was to now I gotta wait for this to dry out to do test number three, but test number three is you take just regular white vinegar and you put a couple drops on the on the charcoal and if it fizzes, then it's a lower quality. If there's if there's no fizz and the and the, the vinegar is just absorbed and it's and it's silent, then it's a really good high quality because there's no ash inside to react with the vinegar. So and let me scoop up what I got here, put it on this piece of paper that Margaret's supposed to read, so I'll put it on. <laughs> I could get another one. This side, and we'll see how okay, Taylor. big of a pile of biochar I created. Wow, it's still a little warm under there. Now, keep in mind, I started with a pile that was only about four or five inches at the base, and only two inches tall. I'd say I got most of the material that I put into being biochar out as biochar. And I would call wow. this probably Ooh. middle road biochar. Would you like a piece to take home? <laughs> the fourth Middle test. of the road. This is my personal test. The fourth test. Hey, Taylor. Yeah. Okay, buddy. The fourth test is visual. Really good high quality biochar that you create when you hold it in the sunlight will have a rainbow sheen to it. It'll have this, this beautiful metallic rainbow sheen and when you're holding it off light it'll look like it's glowing. It'll have kind of like a silver blue glow. And that is when you're making biochar that is what you want. That is 
the effect that you're going for. The rainbow so. sheen. And this concludes another fine Perma University workshop. And as Perma University workshops are sponsored by Pizzeria, well, we're fed by them. They're, they're giving us pizzas. So we're gonna we're gonna give the Rita a shout out. Calling Pizza Rita! Oh, it's Pizza Rita! Woohoo! Pizza! We're saved! Pizza! Oh, oh, it's Alex. Hi, Alex. Hey, hello. <laughs> pizza, pizza, pizza. Yeah, there, there's our, there's our crowd. And uh, here we are at the conclusion of another Perma University workshop, and uh, pizzas provided by Pizza Rita, and. It's Alex again. Yes. She she must love Permian University. I do. Okay, so she she loves Permian University. And so what what have we got tonight, Alex? We have got a five pounder tonight. Another, God, this is great. Five pound pizzas. You want you to know, show it to him? Yeah, let's 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 do a cameo of this beautiful five pound pizza. Oh, look at that beautiful five pound pizza. Powering sustainability one slice at a time.